Hey, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Copperhead Customs and welcome to a new episode. Today, we're going to do something a bit different. Today, we're going to do a how-to video. A how-to rebuild a Holden HQ or basically any GM front end. So we're going to show you how to do ball joints and bushes in the upper and lower control arms, mainly. Uh, I'll do a whole time lapse of pulling the whole thing down and putting it all back together as well brakes everything but the main part that we're going to concentrate on is the how to do bushes in the uppers and lowers and ball joints without a press that's right with just some hand tools and a couple of little kits kits you can go get to from uh, super cheap or harbour freight okay so you need to go yourself buy one of these i think they're about 110 dollars in australia and there's another a ball joint separator kit, which is down here in the toolbox. And you'll need this one out of it. So uh, that's probably the same probably the same price. You get that little sucker as well. So you go buy those two kits and you're going to be able to do this, okay? And uh, as far as I can see, this ain't on YouTube. All right? There's no one that's done this on YouTube. And it can be done and it's not that hard, okay? You need to use this thing and that's about it. All right, you'll need to make a couple little couple little uh, little packers you need to make a couple little packers different length packers and uh, basically you can do it all at home very cheaply all right so that is what the plan is if you're new here and this is your first time joining us you need to go down here and uh, have a look at all our cars and vids okay we do a bit of everything all right so we've got this one on the go so we are basically the home of the $5,000 build, okay? This is a $5,000 build, that's 99% finished, ready to go down the street. Here's another one that we're about to start. We're gonna build that for $5,000 as well. So that's what we do here. But we also do some pretty flash. You know, we do some dearer builds too, but we have cars freaking everywhere, all right? So, enough rambling. Let's go and get this freaking done. Alrighty, first things first. You would have just seen I undid the, well, this thing was that dodgy. It had that in it. <laughs> Looks like a coat hanger instead of a split pin. So that shouldn't be in there. It's meant to be a proper split pin, right? So we take that out anyway. And then we undo our, can you see that over there? Yes, yeah, so we undid the nut on that and pulled our hub off. Now we will replace the bearings in that at a, in a minute. Then we'll just give this a little wipe so we're not making so much mess. And something else you can do while you're there is, see in here, this is all full of a bit of gunk. So we'll just get that out of there, okay, just for later on. So we'll give that a proper clean later. That is our spindle. Comprende? Now, you would have just seen the little clip here. You can see that there. Hopefully you can see that good. So there's just this little clip and there's a little pin, okay? So you just turn the little pin with the pliers, the clip pops off. There's meant to be one on this side too, but it was missing. Yay! It was missing because these brakes are pretty well, as you can see, they are rusty and horrid. Right? Now, the next thing is, you need to take all this apart, right? So uh, basically, what I find is, these are painful. <laughs> so, basically, uh, you need to get some force and separate separate the bottoms and get our little adjuster out once the adjuster's out you'll be able to pop the spring out much easier and then you can just dislodge them up the top by bending them popping the top of the of the the shoe off its little guide it will come away from here and then you can unhook the spring so i don't bother trying to undo the springs in this point until we release the tension because it is just a way difficult okay so once that's done, we can remove this little clip at the top. That just pops out. We've got our uh, wheel cylinder here. We're going to replace that. And we've also got a nut here, a bolt here and here, sorry, two there. 
and this big one at the top. And when we've undone all those three, the whole backing plate assembly will come away from our spindle. Okay, so I'll quickly do that and then we will come back. Reaper. Okay, we are back live, and so, uh, last thing you would have seen is I took the lower control arm off, there's two bolts in there, two nuts, sorry, in there, off these bolts, and just take note of the packers that are in there, guys, so, that's, uh, those packers are in there, right, that's for your wheel alignment, so you need to put them back in, you'll have to go get this thing re-wheel aligned when you finish, but at least that will get it in the ballpark, all right, guys? So you would have seen, I just kept going. Uh, we had to get the, uh, one of the ball joint separators on the ball joint there to get it off the spindle, and then you would have just seen that thing pop. Now here is a tip for you. Uh, I didn't have to do it, see, because uh, my shocker was undone, and I've got chop springs. There, there was chop springs in this thing, okay, because we are lowering this car and we chop the springs to lower it until we to, just to uh it's a temporary thing to make sure we get our how low we want okay to know exactly what springs i want to buy whether it's two inch lowered three inch lowered one inch lowered right so this has choppies in it uh so it didn't matter on this but put a jack underneath your lower control arm when you undo all of this stuff okay when you take that shock out when you break your ball joints off the spindle make sure you've got a jack under there because that spring can pop okay that spring can pop out 
and smash you in the face or the arm or the leg, and it will do carnage, all right? So put a jack underneath the lower control arm when you break all this down, and then when it's all off, then you can let the jack down, okay? And, and get that spring out when it's not under uh, full tension. Right, so we've completely stripped our backing plate uh, because we are replacing the hose. We are replacing the... Uh, we're, we're replacing everything. We're replacing the shock, the hose, the wheel cylinder, the brakes, the springs, everything in there. We're putting new wheel bearings in the hub. Uh, yeah, so we're replacing everything in this, all right? We're taking the uh, steering arm or the tie rod or whatever you want to call it. We've taken that off because we were replacing both of them as well. You would have also seen we needed to use the little, the little ball joint remover to break them. So that little kit there, I've showed you... I'm pretty sure I showed you the other piece that's missing in there that we need to do this. So, yeah, you'll need this kit. This kit is going to come in handy for you, all right? Now, you would have seen me at the start try to break the ball joint, separate the ball joint with this ball joint removing tool. It's full of grease and yuckness, but... And this one just wouldn't do it. So sometimes these just will not do it. But if you are planning on trying to reuse your ball joints because you have good ones, do not use this tool because there is a really good chance you will damage your ball joint with this tool, okay? If you want to reuse your ball joints, you need to use one of those, all right? 100%, because that thing, you'll drive that in and you'll damage the shaft of the ball joint and it will give you grief, all right? So only use that if you are replacing your ball joints. Otherwise, use one of these. Now, sometimes in a, uh, like a lot of cars, you don't even need to use these. You can just hit the low, like see the little plate on there. It's got a little plate welded. That's for you to hit on the hammer. And then they just separate, right? That happens quite a lot. But this is an old car. Don't know how many times this thing's been through floods. Like, it, it, you know, so these, these ones, we're not separating. And to tell you the truth, I've actually already separated these when I put those chop springs in. And that's why there was half of it was undone. And that top one still didn't want to come undone. All right, so we've got it all torn. I think you've got it all. There's the two, bol uh, two bolts in there to hold the lower in. Uh, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, there's two 12 mil, uh, sorry, half-inch bolts underneath that hold the shock. Uh, there's two 716 bolts in the back that hold the wheel cylinder. Um, yeah, so it's all, it's all pretty, that was all pretty self-explanatory, I've seen, but you would sort of seen the whole process. Now, something you should do is take photos of all this, on your car, take photos of it all if you want. Okay, take some photos, and then you 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 don't have issues when you go to put it back together. Okay. Now, something else you would have seen was, and this stuff is your friend. I'm telling you, you need to go buy Enox. Now, you're not going to buy it in a thing like that unless you go buy ten or five or twenty liters or whatever. But go buy yourself a can of Enox. All right, I'm telling you, there's lots of brands of this sort of stuff, but this one here is the best. This is the best you're going to get. Inox MX3, okay? I swear by this stuff. And there was a few bolts that gave me curry. These ones in here were giving me curry because I hadn't sprayed them. You would have seen me spray everything else, and most of it come apart pretty well. These bolts, were they were giving me grief. They were so tight. I gave them a little quick squirt, waited about seriously two minutes, and then they undid really easy. All right, so get yourself some Inox, especially if you're dealing with an old car because you just I just douse them. All right, now, enough rabbiting on. Let's get all this stuff on the bench. We've got to clean all this and start replacing parts. And, uh, yeah, oripa. <laughs>
so we are baby 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 ba -ba. so what you would have hopefully seen it would all in time lapse but uh we'll work backwards eh um we just had to grind the uh, studs down and knock them out yeah now hopefully you yours is like my other one was which is a bolt in which is what the new one will be now we did get a little bit of grief it didn't come off the same as the other one this one uh yeah so what i did is i actually used an old bush and made this little packer which didn't actually work it worked a little bit but basically uh what you do is you got that in there like so correct okay and uh we just put this in and then that grabs all of the pieces of the bush see that will grab all of them i won't if you don't you you might leave that piece behind right so and uh basically you put the little packer on on here with the nut and the plate and you just drive that and so you'll actually get this all the way to the edge okay now and then you replicate it on the other side and you can drive it all the way to the other one all the way there so you've nearly got them now at that point you could uh honestly you could probably grab a hammer and a, and a little thing and and tap that last little piece out okay or you can make a little anything basically another one of these a little tiny one that fits in there and grabs onto the other bush okay to the existing bush something that fits this sort of diameter and we'll and we'll just push that little tiny bit uh like realistically you could actually just have uh, a, a couple of smaller ones of these that will actually get in there so um basically yeah so basically that there will slide along until it gets to there but the bush is only to there so you've still got this little piece here to get the bush out okay so you just need something to push that little bit out the other day we did something with this but i couldn't actually work out how i did it <laughs> so i don't know if I, we asked it or what but we had that hooked up the other day and it did it um yeah i can't remember how i freaking did it though but anyway um all right i think what i did is i think i had that hooked onto the bush like this i think i had it hooked up like that then i think i left the nut on that was what it was i left the nut on here i reckon and put that on that because what happens is when i went to do it then it actually uh it, it this this maxed out it was all the way in um so yeah i think you just needed to have a i just needed to have the nut on here like back there like that so then this had a bit more drive and that would have done it right so you can get away without using this like i just showed you but which is in the other kit yeah but you'll you'll probably need that kit to pull your front end apart because if it's anything like mine no matter what no matter what i did the 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 uh the the bull joint splitter bar the old technique of tapping the side none of them uh really worked very well okay i had to actually use the proper separators all right so anyway that's got it all dismantled yeah on this you seen that we all right comprende follow on that easy peasy now on this one you seen i had to put a little bit of heat that was only because it had had a little whack here and i couldn't actually get my my collar in there because this here was 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 compressed a bit all right so um you seen we just you just get the kit you'll work it out it's pretty easy peasy you just put one that goes on the outside, one that goes on the inside, push, push, right? The same with here. Very easy. These pop out really, really easy. Now, before we reinstall, though, we want to make sure that we make a little packer to put in there, okay? Now, if you want to be really fussy as well, if you want to be really fussy with this, you can do a similar thing. You can actually put a packer in here. I've seen other people put packers in there to make sure that this here doesn't, doesn't bend. Look, it has not bent any way, shape, or form. So... That's where we're at. All right. Now, reinstall the new ones. Clean this one up a bit more. Uh, and what you would have seen is everything got a little scrape, and then they're all everything. All the parts have been sprayed in inox. Uh, yeah, the backing plate, grease on your little flat bits. Okay, that's where your pad sits. So grease that. I inox everything. Okay, we've put our new wheel cylinder in. Now put your hose on. Put your hose on at this stage, okay? Before you put it all back together, make sure your hose is on. Trust me, you'll run into grief. So, that's ready, that's ready. The lower control arm needs to 
things put in, the upper needs the things put in, and uh, all we've got to do is clean the spindle, and we're ready. Oh, and you want to see me grease the bearings, yeah? Bearings greased, easy peasy. As you can see, I packed inside a little bit. I put some grease on the inside there as well. And, um, yeah, all right. Let's uh, put it all back together. Reaper.
Right, so there it is. Hey, we just did it. And I actually did it different this time than last time. Uh, not an issue in the world. Hey, it was all pretty easy, wasn't it? So we made a few little different packers and what have you. Uh, I did it completely different than I did the first time. So there's a million ways to skin this cat. Hey, it is not hard. You are seriously wasting your freaking money if you do this at a mechanic. And if you can't do this, honestly, you probably shouldn't be working on the car. If you can't, it's not rocket science. It's just it's time consuming, whatever. So to all those other channels that haven't succeeded, you have to have a good hard look at yourselves, I reckon, because that is not a hard job. Okay, yes, we've got a big freaking mess. We've got a million tools out, spanners and shifters and all different sizes, but it wasn't hard. Everything's in this kit. Everything's in here to do it. Okay? Everything. We did use this. We didn't have to, but we did use it uh, just to finalise, pushing them in. Um, like I said, there's about 4,000 different ways you can do it. You buy that kit, you can do it. All right? If you buy this one, which you probably need, this kit that this is in, to get them off in the first place. So you're looking at a couple hundred bucks, guys. A couple hundred bucks for the two kits. Now you got those kits for the rest of your life and you can do your ball joints forever. Now those kits will work on other cars too. So uh, it's great success to me, I think, because that there, that little sucker there works an absolute treat. There's no need to go and get a press. Just go get that, I'm telling you. So there you go. That is how to replace upper, lower ball joints uh, and upper and lower bushes. And we did the whole hog. So far we've done the tie rod ends and we've cleaned all the parts and we've started to assemble that. So, huh? Yeah, exactly. Not hard one. All right, Reaper. All right, so well, we're going to end it. We're going to end this video here. Uh, if you want to see it all put back into the car, you'll have to go over uh, and check out the um, the Bedford series because it will be in that, okay? Uh, this is solely just a how-to, put the bushes in. Um, so if you've only just joined us for the how-to, go check out our channel. we got builds everywhere. 54 Pontiac, 40 Chevy, 39 Bedford. This is under five grand build. This is an under five grand build. We've got a 32 Ford. Uh, we've got a 28 Oakland. We've got a 70 Pontiac. Oh, and there's a heap. There's a heap of them that we're doing. So, yeah, if you have just joined us for the how-to, go check the channel out. You might be surprised. We uh, do some pretty crazy stuff here. Anyway, like I said, if you want to go and uh, see the rest of the installation, you'll have to go over, check the series out. It will be in there. And uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, go subscribe, like, share, all that. I don't normally say it, but I have said it in this one. So we'll go and and uh, yeah, so all the subscribers, thank you. And go drop some comments down of what you thought of this because I haven't found this on YouTube anywhere, okay? Because I didn't know how to do it. I didn't know how to do this. So I went looking for YouTube to find out and I couldn't find it. So anyway, as we do here, we will go. Bye-bye.